Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sue Knows. So, yeah, that's my name, Sue Knows. That's how I introduce myself to my students so that they remember my name. Uh, I'm from Nepal, and it's good to be in Make Munich to share my story, my experience as a engineer, as a teacher, as an educator. So today I'll just share my story. Uh, so I was born in a village in, in Nepal where with no roads and with no electricity, so it's quite a ruler. And uh, uh, I used to go to one of the government schools there, and uh, I don't remember much what I studied there, but I do remember this picture, how the classroom looked like. And uh, when my father got a job in the capital city, Kathmandu, we all moved to Kathmandu. And I get a chance to get into one of the private boarding schools. So I studied there from grade 1 to grade 10. But the, even the, I guess the classroom was good, nicer, but whatever I learned in the school was still boring. Because I was not, never challenged in the school. I used to uh, tinker a lot, but in the school I never get that chance. So I remember in grade 7, what I did was I broke a perfectly healthy clock and then convert it into a security system inside my geometric box. And uh, I used to wonder, like, why uh, my classroom be like this? Why can't I, why we can't, like, open a clock and then learn mathematics behind its gears, learn about the science behind its circuit, learn about the history of time, right? So I was always used to wonder. And uh, I thought maybe when I go to high school, I will get that chance, but it never happened. And then I, I joined engineering to see if I could make something, but that also didn't happen. It was really frustrating for me until I found uh, these people. So they were also just like me who want to make things, break things, and do stuff. So together, as young engineers, we decided to open a product design company because we thought maybe we could, we could, if we could solve local problems with the local solutions that had global impact, that would be awesome, right? And as engineers, we always wanted to make something. So we named the company Karkhana. So Karkhana is a Sanskrit word that uh, means a factory, literally a factory. So we opened a factory. So the first thing, the first job that we took was to design a vending machine. So, but we, when we took this job, we didn't know, we knew like, how the vending machine looked because we saw in movies, right? So it vends things, so it is interesting. So we pitched this idea to this new company that has recently launched their online payment gateway called eSeva. So we, we pitched this idea that we can make a vending machine for you and we can use your platform to make payments. And they, were, they really liked the idea and okay, they granted the money, but we didn't know how to do it. So with uh, two months of hard work, fa constant failing and like iteration, we kind of delivered the product. So this is the simulated picture of uh, the vending machine on the shopping mall. But then uh, we as a team, when we reflected back on what we did, we kind of felt that we, we didn't succeed. It. Because if that company had asked us to make, let's say, another 10 of this vending machine, we would not be able to replicate it. Because there was no ecosystem that would sustain a product design company in Kathmandu or in Nepal. Because you have to make everything by yourself. We can't go to a, like a mechanical shop and ask them to design this spring because they don't, they don't work in precision. They just make a spring that looks like a spring. But for us, there's, we need accuracy and it's, it doesn't matter for them. So from circuit to, from circuit to painting to like welding, drilling, everything is done from scratch. So we had to do it from scratch. And we realized that maybe it's not a good idea to, design, to have a product design company. But, but we had certain realization that even we were engineers that got a degree from a decent college with decent marks. And we are smart enough, but we are not able to design a product. So, it leads to an interesting reflection that we realize that maybe this gap between us, that the skills that we get in our school, in our university, is not what the industry wants. There's a huge gap. And we saw it as an opportunity. So we wanted to fill that gap. 
So to fill that gap, we, are, we, we kind of pivoted to education from product design. So So then uh, we started designing learning experience for like engineering students and we did some workshop with them but it, it didn't turn out that well and it was not as uh, rewarding as with students. So we even went lower the grades and so we found a perfect sweet spot in the middle schools. So we now have a, a formula, a secret formula, a framework that is a secret to whatever we are doing. So I'm gonna share that secret to you all and, and share. And you can, you can share with anyone you like. So what we realize is that making is how we learn. So at Karkhana, we say that making is centered to all learning. And as a child, that's how we learn. But then as we grow up, that's what missing. We don't make things, we just try to think. It's only in our head, never in our hands. So we bring back that making in, in learning. So this, our student Arogya, he uh, told us that the favorite moment in his classroom was to make the steering for a game, for a car racing game. So he wanted to make a car racing game and he made his own steering so that you can play the game more interactively. So I, we think the making adds that value which like talking can't add because you are working with the material, with the, uh, with, uh, you're working with the hands, with your senses, with your eyes, with the smell, and uh, you'll be using different tools. And it's, it's a different experience. But then while you're making, you, you'll be sort of like following some kind of cycle, even if you realize or don't realize. We call it TMPI cycle. Think, make, play, and improve. That's what you do. Even if I don't tell you there's a cycle, you'll be always following them. But if you are conscious of the cycle, then you can achieve a lot. And most of the time, what happens is that you just follow the cycle once. You think, you make, you play. Sometimes you only think, sometimes you only make, you never go into improving part. But in our class, we ask students to do the cycle as fast as they can so that they improve whatever they're doing. So, yeah. And uh, while they are making and while they are following the cycle, we encourage them to work in teams so that they learn the collaboration skills and uh, they will be they will be given with the challenges and that they have to solve like thinking kind of out of box they need to be critical and they need to communicate their ideas with their peers so we uh, we had a resident from nyu uh, sangai she uh, was a very good with uh, paper working pop-up cards so she shared this knowledge with us and the next day, we convert it into a class. And this is what one of our students made from that class. And here's Aroge is again like trying to solve, I think he's, he's trying to solve the connection between his uh, console and the Arduino. Right? He's trying to solve the problem. And again, he is here like sharing to his friends. There's some issues with the programming and he's trying to help others solve the problem. So they also work with collaborative with each other and give feedback to each other on, on their work. And yes, Rayan, one of the students on, on the right hand side, he's very good at like presenting and giving ideas. So he's running uh, his own session to all the other students about how to be present, better presenter. So he's giving, he's giving feedback to other friends and their presentation. So he's running his own session. That's how it works. And uh, then comes the, the STEAM part, I guess, everyone knows it. Science, technology, engineering, arts. So the knowledge part. And we really don't really focus on this uh, part because if you have the right attitude and right skill, we think that you'll get the knowledge eventually. So we don't have to focus on that. So yes, our students are making some cars and explaining its working principles. They prototype different ideas. So you can see different models being designed and uh, we also really focus on art and design. That's why our uh, students Avani and Sanbi, they work on their designs like to make their house like look really beautiful. So we really encourage that because the things that you see should look good, it should feel good and it should evoke some emotion through that work. And again, precision is really important. So we want our students to be precise. So you need to do measurements and maths is always important, right? So that's where it comes. So this is the secret of whatever we do. So we call it the Karkhana wheel, and that's what keeps us moving and improving all the time.
I want to uh, share one of our uh, class that maybe explains how this wheel is being exercised. So uh, we tell our students uh, that you're all villagers, like you're like 100 years back in time. So I guess some of you know about this, this uh, dumpling with a pickle. So what happens is that in that village, there comes a demon. It's called uh, Momasur. So it's a dumpling monster that lobs to eat dumpling. So he threatens the villagers that he will destroy the village because he was very hungry. But then in the village, there's always a wise man. And he made a pact with the Mamasu that if he stays in that cave, like near the river, the villagers will feed him with dumplings every day so that he doesn't have to kill animals and like do all the hard work. So they, he, they would feed him. But there's a bridge in between the village and the river. So the, the deal was that he would stay away from the village across the river and that cave and the villagers would feed him with the dumplings. But the demon kind of agreed that it's a good deal for him, but he had a condition that the, uh, the villagers need to perform drama as well. And the villager asked, why do you need drama? And he said that I need to have some form of entertainment while I'm eating dumplings. Okay, but the villagers have no choice, right? They need to agree. So, so the demon goes to the cave and like for a sleep, like to sleep for two well weeks. Now our students have two well weeks to design a, some kind of device that transport the dumpling to the cave with pickle, like not mixed, and also perform a drama. So that's how the two well weeks will look like. So we would design the session in such a way that the kids will design, work on their uh, devices for half of the class, and then half they will practice the drama. So while they're designing their device, uh, like let's say if they, if they decided to design a car like this, then they will learn about wheel and axle, circle, and then they need to propel it, right? They can't just like uh, push it. So they need to know about energy, like uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, and they will apply that concept into application and they need to propel that device and then send the dumplings away to the monster. In the similar way, they will be also practicing their drama, like maybe starting with facial expression and then situational drama and then maybe narrative drama. They'll write their own script, they will build their own props, and at the end of the session, we'll have parents, teachers, everyone, like just like this, and uh, there will be a monster again, like he will sit somewhere around there and they will first send the actual dumplings and actual pickles in, that, in the device. And when the demon is start eating the momos, then the student will perform drama. And uh, the class ends like that. At the end, we'll have dumpling party with parents and students. So that's how our session ends. So it's really fun for students as well as for parents because they see the change in their, in their, in their kids right away how they were like 12 weeks ago and how they are in 12 weeks. So we don't have to give them marks yet that your son got like 10 out of, I don't know how much, right? So we don't give marks. So that's how we assess our students. So overall, that's what we do as a Karkana. We design learning experience. And if I need to sum up whatever we do in a sentence, then I would say this, that we want our students to get this one key insight that the world is malleable. You can change it. You can reshape it but only when you have right skills. And the right skills are, you need to be creative, you need to be collaborative, you need to be able to uh, come into your ideas, you need to be a critical thinker, right? So that's the skills, and that's what we promote in schools with students. So for that, we have two programs, uh, which I will not explain. There's a Karkhana Innovators Club and there's Be Creative. One is after school and one is in school. That's what I'll say. And uh, yeah, so these are some pictures of our classes where kids are making different stuff and they're learning as they are making. So yeah, that's, that's thank you. Any questions? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, just start with the first uh, question. The, uh, the children you work with, which range of age is it? Can you... S yes, the age is 8 to 14 years. Middle school, 8 to 14 years. Yeah. And uh, you are originally like, because you haven't talked so much about your, your personal background, you come from teaching or what is your really like intention yeah. about that? Actually, I am an engineer by degree, an educator by profession and let's say a maker at heart. 
So that's how I like to introduce myself. Yeah, I'm an engineer basically, but then I'm not, I'm not now a teacher. Yeah. Okay. So questions from the audience? No questions? No questions? No. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, is this program of two weeks done during holiday of the kids or? Yes, so just like I said, we have two programs, Karkhana Innovators Club, that's an after school program that happens in our space. But then we also have another program called Be Creative that happens in school. So we go to a school and then deliver the classes. So we have both programs. Any other questions? Yes. Is it possible to have this kind of education here in Germany? Is it possible to have this? Yeah, I, is it possible to have this kind of education here in Germany or anywhere around the world uh, through I, your concept? Yeah, I think it is possible, and that's why we're here to share. It is possible. It is possible in country like Nepal. Then come on, this Germany, right? So it well, should be possible here. I mean, uh, do you do you teach your skills or or a framework for the people who are uh, planning to make such a camp or something? Um, do you share your knowledge, or do you just uh, yourself do this? Yeah, it's been just a four years that we have started. So I think we'll eventually go there. That we'll have like different branches all around the world because we didn't think Karkhana is just a company that's in Nepal. It's a global company and we think we can have this educational model all around the world because I think it's really innovative and it's, I think, needed in the 21st century because education has changed so much, has not changed so much in like 100 years as other technology or other fields. So we need to bring change. I totally agree that we need this. Uh, uh, I do similar things, uh, but in my own ways and at hackerspaces around the world and schools are starting to adapt this kind of thing everywhere and I'll be talking about it in my next talk in China. But um, one thing that's really been um, uh, challenging is that educational bureaucracies require some form of evaluation that's quantitative. and. Uh, I've been trying to come up with ideas, and other people have. No one's really done anything that appeases the bureaucrats. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we've thought about that, and we also did uh, research, and then we published in Stanford. So it's about uh, comfort with computing with kids. So we did uh, baseline assessment, and then we did our we run our program, and then did like post program assessment, and we did some analysis with some quantitative as well as qualitative data, and then we presented it. But working in country like Nepal, it's an advantage because there's not much bureaucracy and we can do all, like whatever we want. Like you can go to schools and like test these classes. No one will say anything because uh, what we're doing is quite different than what's happening. So it's, it's better. So yeah. I agree, thanks. Some more questions? I think you're absolutely right. As the question before, it, maybe it's more difficult in Germany to, to bring that really to school because it has to be part of the teaching plan and everything. And so it's very a fantastic uh, uh, input you're doing here. Yeah, but I think if we could, like, like just like you said, prove somehow that this kind of education model is better than what's happening, and if we can impress the bureaucracy or the government people, maybe it will change, like, in a, in a minute, I, like in a, in a less time, I don't know, but I think they need an example that worked well, right, with some kind of proof, let's say, and that will have events, uh, like yeah, they will have credi credits, like, and maybe, I don't know, yeah, but we're, we're trying to that. Okay, so thank you very much. I think the work with, uh, with children is really important thing, as we see also here at the Make Munich and in the uh, workshop spaces here that are going around. So thanks a lot um, for coming to Germany and to present your work here. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for your time. <laughs>